Hello guys, this is Grumpy. Welcome back to another Feed the Beast tutorial. Today we're going to be covering a little more Greg's tech. Today we're going to cover all the storage devices. And we're also going to cover this, this uh, device right here. It's called a Lapatron Pack. It's basically it replaces the, it's a better version of the lap pack. We'll go over that in a little while. But let's go ahead and get started. First we have here is the LESU. It stands for um, Lapatronic Energy Storage Unit. It stores 1 million EU by default has a max input of 32 EU per tick and a max output of uh, 5 EU per tick. Now if we place these um, blocks right here around it, it increases all the stats of the LESU. So what are these? These are called LESU blocks. They're not that hard to make but basically it takes a stack and a half of lapis to make one of these more or less. That's their most expensive component but that could be very expensive in the long run but basically if we look at it now it stores 7 million instead of 1 million because I put 6 of them and it has an output of 11 so every time I add one of these it increases the storage by 1 million and the output by 1 now if I keep adding these eventually this max input will, will go up it will jump up to 128 and eventually jump up to 512 and uh, maybe beyond that I'm not sure but uh, you would need 500 of these 512 of these things to, to get an output of 512 so or you need 511 but that's quite a few of these it's gonna take you like 700 something stacks of lapis and that's kinda of ridiculous you would never do that so I don't know what use this thing is good for um, so let's go ahead and go on I, I'm not impressed with that thing at all so if it has a use somebody let me know because I can't think of a practical use of why you'd ever want to use it but let's go into this one it's the adjustable energy storage unit or the AE ESU. Now what I like about this one is it stores 10, 100 million EU so it has 10 times the storage capacity of an MFSU but let's see here the output is fully adjustable so by the way it will accept extreme voltages so if you want to power it with a the beta version of the fusion reactor you could, this can get power directly from that or if you have a nuclear reactor that puts out over 512 EU this thing will accept it but the output is fully adjustable, so let's go ahead and adjust that. We can turn it up or down, whatever we want. The we got a course and the fine adjustment. So this right here will change it by one EU, and the other one changes about like 128, I think. But um, anyway, um, I can't really see an, a reason to ever adjust this because by the time you're building this thing, you've got pretty you've got a pretty pretty decent power grid. And honestly, I would leave it at 2048. Well, you might be thinking, why not set it to 512? Um, here's the reason: this thing is only going to put out one tick or one packet per tick. So, if it's set to 512, you're getting 512 EU per tick through the power grid. Now, at 2048, it will put out one packet of 2048. So, you're going to get four times as much uh, total electrical units out of the system by setting it to 2048. And so what you're better off doing is always leaving it at 2048 and what you want to do is you want to put uh, HV transformer in line with it. So you put an HV transformer down like this. Now this thing does knock the voltage down to 512 EU per tick. So you're thinking well, what's the purpose of that? Well this transformer puts out four packets whereas this thing only puts out one. So this thing is going to, what this setup right here will do, it'll take one packet of 2048 EU per tick and knock it down to four packets of 512 EU per tick. So, um, like let's say for some, for some reason I had these things all going, I had the output of this going into these four MFSUs, here's what's going to happen. If I leave this thing off and wire this thing directly to this, these uh, you're going to have uh, 512 EU per tick going into these, so basically I'm not sure how that would work. I believe what would happen is either one of them is going to fill up before the others do or um, what else would happen is um, this one would get one one tick, then this one, this one, then this one. But if you set this thing to anything below 2048, you're not going to get your maximum power out of it. You're better off doing it this way. Now this way the power does distribute evenly and we can actually verify that. We got 117, we got 174, one four seven seven. They're not identical, but they're pretty close. One four seven seven and one four seven seven. So they distribute pretty evenly. Now that thing's not putting out any power right now because it doesn't have any uh, electricity going into it. But basically, there's your tip. I always leave that thing at two thousand forty-eight. So I don't see any good reason to ever adjust it. 
but these things will all be charging e equally now pretty close to equally so anyway that's why how I'd recommend doing it okay finally we have this one right here this is called an IDSU it's interdimensional storage unit now this is by far the best out of the three and this this right here is gonna be just makes my uh, mouth water just thinking about this sucker I can't play I don't have it yet in my world huh? but I want one that stores one B in EU so this thing stores as much electricity as a hundred MFSU's um, and also too it's, it's it's works they work kind of like an inner chest whereas you if you have more than one of them they're connected so let's place one down here and let's look at how much electricity stored in this one 3.8 million if you come over here this one's storing 3.8 million too they're linked so if I increase this if I increase the amount of EU in this one this one goes up too and this will work cross dimension so you can put one of these in the nether and another one in your home world another one probably in a quarry mist world whatever but the, th the point it being is they're all linked together now um, so the great thing to do one great use of this would be like a put one of these inside of a, a, a mistcraft world it's got eternal storm put a lightning rod and a lightning rod will keep this thing charging and then the power will show up on the power grid automatically another great use for it would be um, you're gonna have a maybe a main power grid somewhere like at your house I have my, in my world I have a solar farm with like 200 and something uh, advanced solar panels and so I could hook this up and like say if I go to another world and I just want to set up a quarry I can use one of these and it's, uh, it's a lot easier or whatever but point is you can have you can build one nuclear reactor and then you can get the power of that nuclear reactor anywhere else in any world any dimension and you're good to go now this thing does have an output of 2048 um, as far as I know the only thing I will accept that is the matter fabricator anything else you want to put a transformer on transform on it like I did here and so I really like that now finally we're going to cover this thing here it's the Lapatron pack now right now it's fully charged it's holding 10 billion EU I can put it on my back and use it like a, a backpack but here's another cool thing I can do with it let me find a uh, let's go over to this adjustable storage unit now if you look at the EU there's only 448 EU in it but I can put it here and it starts charging it starts charging it pretty quick too so it is right now it's draining if I put it in the bottom it'll it'll charge up the AESU if I put it in the top the AESU will charge it back up so now this thing's charging back up so if you ever want to charge this thing um, drop it in one of these machines like that and uh, it'll charge it up pretty darn quick so that's basically it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show you to craft all these, but I'm going to tell you if you start building this high-end stuff, um, you're probably going to need to see an assembly table tutorial if you don't know how to use that because you're going to have to use an assembly table to make some of these ingredients. And you're going to have to have a ton of iridium. So this is more to help people to help people more in in-game, like uh, if you're getting a bunch of iridium and that kind of thing and you got an assembly table going. Okay, well, that just about wraps it up for storage units. As you can see, there's not a whole lot to them, but um, I wanted to say... Um, Appreciate everybody who's watching these videos and liking, comment, subscribing, that kind of thing. It really helps my channel, um, especially when you like a video because the video gets a lot of likes. It lets me know to make more videos of that type. And as long as people are saying, hey, we love these videos, keep making more, I'm going to keep making them. And I also like to say, too, this is the first video I've done since I hit 1,000 subscribers. I just hit 1,000 a few hours ago as, the time, as of the time I recorded this. So I want to thank everybody who subscribed, and thanks for your support, and we will see you next time.